So let's do um, Agent Orange. There's date and time, I believe. So it looks up to me. Let's take that off of there. Real quick, on the appendix. See, I had this C. diff book. Just did the C. diff vid. Let's do the Agent Orange appendix one. Here's a quick, quick story, man. Listen to this and you'll realize I know something. Appendicitis, 1968, Vietnam. A guy named Clyde H. Earnhardt Jr., the older cousin of Dale Earnhardt Jr., drank some beer that had a poison in it. We knew it. We couldn't figure out what to do. We left it alone. He came down with appendicitis and almost died from it. Yeah. Hours later, appendicitis, a 105 plus. They had the ice pack him. It was a miracle he lived. Okay? Well, that's the story of the appendix. I'm about ready to tell you. See, the poison was in the beer, and he drank it, went down in the gullet. This is where his appendix is. This is where the poison was attracted to, whether it was a positive negativeness or whatever. I'm sure all poison had great negativeness to it. So I'm not so sure that the appendix didn't attract all that poison to itself and started working over time to destroy it. and couldn't do it. There was too much poison there. So the guy had appendicitis almost died from it. Simple as that. There you go. That tells you what the appendix is. That's when I determined that the appendix was a fail-safe organ of the body. I was able to understand that. I was able to put it in my brain. I was able to know how to discuss it back in the States with the right people. The only problem was that they got me with Agent Orange. And enough of it that it killed enough of my brain cells and killed certain interconnections and everything that more, my more secret parts, because I'm a good meditator and this and that and everything, good breather, great sportsman, that I, I lost it. I, I just lost that information. And even in the late 1990s, I really didn't get it until the early 2000s. And then it came out in 2007 what the appendix was that it was an organ, that it did produce pro perfect DNA probiotics, white blood cells, but they didn't say anything else. And I'm saying that the appendix actually produces in minute quantities some other substances that we don't even know about. You will have to get a device, put it in, be able to put it in somebody's appendix, leave it there, and be able to detect what's being produced and this and that. Even maybe some sort of camera on there. I don't know. But when you find out more about the appendix, you will know how much more it is the fail-safe organ of the body. It stopped the poison from going to the liver, the kidney, any other place. It stopped it, dead to its tracks. The guy would have died. The guy would have died. He didn't. So fast forward to now. I finally figured it out, and I finally figured out that uh, probably most well, almost all veterans that were doused with Agent Orange probably has an atrophied appendix. That's what happens. And I'm trying to prove that. I'm trying to prove that we have a much larger incident rates of uh, no appendix. And I'm not so sure that we can't go in there and actually take a few tissue off of that appendix, maybe the inner part, that we'll still have some sort of residue. I think there's still some sort of residue in the body and the teeth somewhere in everybody's body and they're not finding it and they don't want to find it. They just don't want to do that. It's too much work. It's too much honoring the veteran. Every veteran that ever went to put a foot on Vietnam should be getting at least a 10% compensation. Oh yeah, 10%. $100 a month. Yeah, and anybody that can that knows that they've had Agent Orange on gets even more, almost 25%. And those that can prove a little bit more get more. No, 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 you are cheating the Vietnam veteran. Therefore, you're cheating yourselves. You're not being honorable. Do you understand that? You're not being forthwith, honorable, discovering, doing the right investigations, getting the right scenario going. You're missing out on that. So anyway, here's how you can detect anybody that's gotten starting to get appendicitis. 
you make this little chip, you know, it passes to your skin like all these other things, it stays on there. You put it where you think the appendix is. When the appendix starts working overtime, when that little idling motor has to start working more, it's going to, it's going to vibrate. You could have maybe something that could catch vibration also. But that, that's beside the point. Heat will do it. But you can't get technical on vibration also. And it'll vibrate just like a, a, an idling motor. Starts working harder. Starts putting off more heat. Starts doing that. And this thing will detect it. And you can maybe find out what food you're allergic to. Yeah. No question about it. Every time you ate peanut butter, it seemed like your appendix, you know, two hours later be going off on you. Or, you know, 50 minutes later, 20 minutes. With that device right there in itself, you would learn so, so, so much more about the appendix and its ability and how it works. Just that device itself. I'm sorry. So there's no reason for me to go into this very long or bring forth anything. No skits, no anything. I don't have to show you the appendix and where it is, but the appendix is there and it grows in different areas. It grows, you know, grows different angles. That's why I'm saying you find out where your appendix is and put it right over maybe the very tip of it or the bulk part of it. I don't know. You need to do that study. So now, Oprah, I've given you the chance to stop 60,000 plus deaths a year of C. diff. And now I'm giving you the opportunity to let the American people know that thank you for your service is nice, but it goes a whole lot longer when you realize and all this money you're giving to people that never did anything for you. All this money you just keep on pushing to people who didn't do anything for you. And maybe never will do anything for you. Just be nothing more than a cog in a drain. And that's it. But these people here did. They get nothing. And these people get it all. You know, it doesn't matter what my opinion is here, one way or another. What matters is, what is the one father in heaven's opinion of this? <laughs> how negative, how much negativeness is this that you don't honor or help those that helped you? And I might say, I was getting a PSC pay in Vietnam. Do you all know, want to know what that was? About 150 some, maybe $180 or something. They took taxes out. All that. You got about $110 a month for getting shot at. Oh, yeah, that's combat pay. I think you got an extra $50 for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a grand total of almost 200 bills a month, man. Just think what you could do with that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know, nice cameras back then were still $35 and stuff like that. Everything was still high price. And $200 went what? You might as well just buy some toilet paper. <laughs> That's about all, people. <laughs> anyway, forget my comedy, forget my insanity, forget all that garbage and everything. Yo, why don't you help start thinking down the right stuff the right way, okay? Can you guys do that? I would appreciate it. Anyway, for the VFW and all those and everything, if any of you people want to help me out or whatever, help yourself out, get this thing going, please do. Please do. I put my phone number on the other. I'm not going to put it here. I'm going to have too many phone calls. Man, do you know how it's like to, to go off to work for a week, okay? Going to friends page, and you come back, and you see that phone, you see all those phone calls on there. What do you think about it? You know, I get home, I see maybe one or two phone calls. <laughs> 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 Think of that. Think of that. Yes, sir. Talk about antisocial. There you go, people. But no, I'm social. 
aren't I? I can be. You all have a great forever, okay? Take care.